Hello, back on track with Breath of Air today. Vocals have arrived, yay. So we've got them to talk about. Um, quite a dramatic change of heart on my guitars. I need to have a good chat about that as well. A little bit of tweaking of the drums. That's what we've got today. Let's get on with it. So I think fade outs used properly are fine. Uh, I'm like I said, I've said multiple times in the past. I'm, I'm not a, a huge fan of them, but it always felt like this song needed one, and I'm really happy with the decision. Played it back to Pauline today. She she heard her vocals processed for the first time today, and she really liked the fade out because previously it's always just been bang, press stop, and it's like oh, where's the song gone? So that's kind of the template of of what it's going to sound like. So that's layer one of the vocals. We've just done a single melody. You can see multiple copies, but they're literally just all um, identical copies of exactly the same phrase sung at the same pitch. Uh, the next idea is to basically write a brand new melody for the entire song. 
and have her sing that as well as a, as a totally separate brand new thing. And then I'll figure out when I want to bring those second lines in and maybe even a third and get full sung harmonies going, three part harmonies in parts of the songs, selected parts of the song. And at the end, just absolutely go ham. I intend to get just a wall of vocal noise at the end of the song as it gets bigger and bigger. But what I really want to talk about today is the guitars, because previously I'd said everything was going to be re-recorded and I re-recorded the first part, the strummed guitars. Um, the only change I've made since last time is that I've taken a load of bass out. In fact, I've actually done it on the, uh, the strummed guitar master bus. I've just lopped arbitrarily a mass of bass off the bottom because they were just polluting the bass guitar. I'll do more EQ processing on this in the meantime. It's such a big sound. This, um, let's get a bit of it going. I mean, it is just filling the frequency range up to 6K. So I'm gonna have to do some cutting of it because it, it, it obviously will interact and interfere with every other sound in the song. But by the same token, I want it to have that sense of impact. So that's something to, the one thing I did know is that all of that bass just wasn't allowed to stay there. Sounds great played on its own, but when you add the bass in, you know, they were just really falling over each other's feet. The other guitars had said I was going to completely re-record everything. This is where the really big change of heart has been because there's a couple of the parts that I've decided they're not good enough. Good enough sounds like it's a compromise. Good enough, that's a different thing. There really aren't many artifacts in this. It's played really quite well. The problem that I had with it was that it, this, this timing wasn't great, so I just went into Audio Warp and fixed it. You can see most of the most of the warp markers are slightly behind whatever beats that they're they're landing on. I wanted to have a slightly lazy feeling, but also pretty tight. So it was finding the compromise of those two opposing ideas, and I think it's worked out pretty well. So between this and the the line below. I think I'm going to allow both of these to stay. I've got this one as well. Exactly the same kind of idea. It looks like a hell of a lot of processing and oh my god do you really want to go to all that effort it really doesn't take long i split it up into two bars exactly as you see it on screen do two bars pick the cycle marker up with your little hand move it to the next two bars move on and in no time at all you just go bang 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 put all your warp markers in at the beginning i was um, over eager you can see that i've put warp markers in at the end of the previous note and the beginning of the next i stopped doing that it's only really the beginning of each note that you're worried about. So as we move on through the phrase, you see those double lines disappear. I just kind of got sick of doing it and realized it was utterly unnecessary. And I don't know, maybe half an hour, something like that. And the whole phrase is done. And then it's, it's obviously up to me as to how much you can see. I'm really making that note there is coming in, you know, really quite late. And so that gives it that, that whole feeling of just kind of falling over itself, which I want. didn't want it military precise. That was never the intention. So that's pretty good. The others, I don't think can say, uh, I can say if this is where we, we have our nasty notes ringing out and all sorts of stuff. So I am going to have to re-record them. And the solo is right in the middle. I love the solo as played and I really wish I could keep it. But I, I can't, or I probably can't. I'll do my best to re-record it and um, and see how we go. I'm, I'm right on the verge at the moment of buying a Universal Audio Ox 
attenuator. I, I want to bring my Fender Twin back into the equation. And I, it's just too loud to to be a usable um, machine with my setup. But if I, if I plug it into an attenuator, then I can reintroduce it into the into the mix. And that's making me reluctant to actually record any of these solos because you know getting my Fender back would be just so glorious. It's just that they're so goddamn expensive. <laughs> I, can't, I can't quite bring myself to do it. But um, anyway, be brave, Anthony. Like I said at the outset, very, very little work done. A little bit of work on the just the, the intro part to kind of clean it up and make it a little bit less complicated. And there was a, a ride bell earlier on in the song that I kind of quite strongly disliked. So I've taken that out moved it down to the ride boat exactly as I said I would, tried it, thought yep, that's that done. Other than that, I've really not done much with the rhythm. I, it just works really nicely. It, it just kind of poodles on in the background, doing its own thing, not getting in the way, but sounding interesting enough when you want to listen to it. The fills are nice. I think it's just one of those happy accidents where my Im initial inclination for the fills to use and the timing of the the progression through the the pace of the rhythm it, it just seems to have worked and I, I think i'm mending something that's not broken if i if i get too too carried away with it so now that i've got the vocals down i've got a really good idea of that's that's really quite a large part of the the structure of the song now it feels like a full song and so i think this week um in addition to having a bit of a play with the the solos um i'll Try some different kinds of keyboard sounds. See if there's anything, if there's any space in the song in the song for keyboards. There, there might not be. There are no lyrics that I want to change. It's gone down right first time, and I'm happy with it. So that's a big relief. Uh, so we'll see where we go from here. Thanks very much for watching this episode. If you hit subscribe and notifications, you'll be sure not to miss the next one. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.